New Orleans, a city of vibrant life and rich history, its heart beats with music and laughter. But beneath its lively exterior lies a darkness, a chilling reminder of a brutal past. This darkness seeps from the walls of a grand mansion on Royal Street, casting a long shadow over the French Quarter. The address is 1140 Royal Street. It's a building that has borne witness to unspeakable horrors. This is the La Lori Mansion, a place where elegance and cruelty once intertwined in a terrifying embrace. The mansion stands as a monument to the darkest corners of the human soul. Its wrought iron balconies whisper tales of suffering, its walls echo with the silent screams of the past. The LaLaurie House is not just a building, it is a vessel of memory, forever haunted by the sins of its former occupants. This is the story of Delphine LaLaurie, the socialite who became a monster. This is the story of the victims who suffered within her walls. And it is the story of the haunting legacy that continues to grip the city of New Orleans. The year was 1832. Delphine McCarty LaLaurie, a woman of wealth and social standing, took possession of the grand residence at 1140 Royal Street. The house was a masterpiece of the French Quarter. Its elegant facade concealed a labyrinth of rooms and courtyards. Delphine, a prominent figure in New Orleans society, was known for her lavish parties. Guests would marvel at her home's beauty. They would whisper about her exquisite taste. But behind the veneer of wealth and refinement, a sinister reality festered. Delphine LaLaurie harbored a dark secret, a cruel streak that would stain the history of her grand home. She was a woman of contradictions. She was admired for her beauty and charm, yet behind her captivating smile a heart of ice lay hidden, and within the walls of her opulent mansion she indulged her darkest impulses. Slavery was an accepted part of life in antebellum New Orleans, but even in a society accustomed to brutality, Rumors spread about Madame LaLaurie's treatment of her slaves. Whispers circulated through the French Quarter, servants disappeared within the mansion's walls, never to be seen again. Neighbors noticed the gaunt, fearful appearance of those who remained. They heard muffled cries echoing from the depths of the house at night. These whispers reached the authorities. They conducted inspections of the LaLaurie household. Each time Delphine managed to deflect their suspicions. She used her wealth and influence. She hid her cruelty behind a mask of respectability. The whispers persisted, but without concrete evidence, no one dared to challenge Madame LaLaurie's authority. The truth, however, would not remain buried forever. It would be revealed in a terrifying spectacle that would expose the depths of her depravity to the world. The night of April 10, 1834 began like any other in the French Quarter. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. The flames erupted from the LaLaurie mansion tearing through the night sky. It was April 10, 1834. The fire spread with astonishing speed, fueled by dry wood and hidden horrors. The blaze illuminated the French Quarter, drawing a crowd of onlookers. Among them were those who had heard the whispers, those who suspected the darkness lurking within the mansion's heart. As firefighters battled the inferno, they made a gruesome discovery that would send shockwaves through New Orleans and beyond. The fire had stripped away the facade of normalcy. It exposed the true nature of the LaLaurie house. In the attic, chained and emaciated figures writhed in agony. They had been subjected to unimaginable tortures. The sight was so horrific, so deeply disturbing that it defied description. It was a scene ripped from the pages of a nightmare. Section 5. Unmasking Horror. The fire had revealed a chamber of horrors. The attic of the LaLaurie mansion was a testament to human cruelty. It was a place where slaves deemed mere possessions in the eyes of their mistress were subjected to unimaginable suffering. Men and women, their bodies broken and scarred, bore witness to the depths of Delphine LaLaurie's depravity. Some were found chained to walls, their limbs contorted at unnatural angles. Others bore the marks of whips and branding irons. Instruments of torture, crafted with chilling ingenuity, lay scattered among the victims. The air was thick with the stench of blood, sweat, and fear. The rescuers were met with a chorus of moans and pleas for mercy. It was a scene that would forever be etched into the annals of New Orleans history. The discovery of the tortured souls within the LaLaurie mansion ignited a firestorm of outrage that would consume the city. Section 6. A City's Fury. News of the atrocities spread like wildfire through New Orleans. The city, accustomed to the brutalities of slavery, 
was nonetheless horrified by the sheer depravity revealed within the Lalori mansion. A mob, fueled by anger and disgust, descended upon the residents. They demanded justice for the victims. They wanted retribution against their tormentor. The crowd swelled, their cries growing louder, their intentions growing more violent. But Delphine Lalori, the architect of this horror, was nowhere to be found. She had vanished into the night, aided by her wealth and connections. The mob, denied their vengeance, turned their fury upon the mansion itself. They stormed the house, destroying everything in their path. Furniture was smashed, portraits ripped from the walls, and the once grand residence was left in ruins. The LaLaurie Mansion, once a symbol of wealth and refinement, was now a monument to the city's shame. It stood as a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath a veneer of respectability. Section 7. Vanishing into the Shadows In the aftermath of the fire the search for Delphine LaLaurie intensified. Rumors swirled through the city about her whereabouts, some whispered that she had escaped to Alabama, others claimed she had boarded a ship bound for France. Despite numerous alleged sightings her fate remains a mystery to this day. The wealthy socialite, once a prominent figure in New Orleans society, had vanished without a trace. The city, haunted by the horrors she had inflicted, was left to grapple with the legacy of her crimes. The LaLaurie Mansion, its walls stained with the blood and suffering of its victims, stood empty, a constant reminder of the darkness that had once resided within. Delphine LaLaurie's escape only added to the mystery and horror of the story. It fueled speculation and cemented her place in New Orleans lore as a figure of both fascination and revulsion. Section 8. A House of Echoes. Years passed. The LaLaurie Mansion, once a place of elegance, remained abandoned. Its grandeur faded, its facade crumbled. But the stories, fueled by whispers and legends, refused to die. The house on Royal Street had become a specter of its former self. It was a shell haunted by the echoes of its tortured past. Some whispered that the mansion was cursed, others claimed it was a portal to another realm. Whatever the truth, the LaLaurie house cast a long shadow over the French Quarter. It became a magnet for those drawn to the macabre. They came seeking a glimpse into the darkness that had once unfolded within its walls, and they often found more than they bargained for. Section 9. Ghosts of Royal Street as the decades turned into centuries, stories of strange and unsettling occurrences at the LaLaurie Mansion began to surface. People claimed to have seen flickering lights in the windows of the abandoned house. Others heard screams and moans echoing from within its walls. There were tales of shadowy figures lurking in the courtyard. Some even claimed to have encountered the ghost of Delphine LaLaurie herself. Was it merely superstition, or were these occurrences a manifestation of the unspeakable horrors that had transpired within the mansion's walls? The line between reality and legend blurred. The LaLaurie house became a breeding ground for ghost stories. It became a place where the veil between the living and the dead seemed perilously thin. The stories, passed down through generations, became an integral part of New Orleans folklore. They served as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of even the most civilized society. Section 10. The LaLaurie Legacy. The LaLaurie House stands today as a chilling landmark in New Orleans. It is a stark reminder of the city's complex and often brutal past. The horrors that unfolded within its walls continue to fascinate and horrify. The LaLaurie story serves as a cautionary tale. It reminds us that even in the most civilized of societies, darkness can lurk beneath the surface. It compels us to confront the sins of the past and to acknowledge the enduring legacy of slavery. The LaLaurie House is more than just a haunted house. It is a symbol. It represents the capacity for both great evil and great resilience that exists within the human heart. Section 11. Never Forgotten. The story of the LaLaurie House is not easily forgotten. It lingers in the air of New Orleans. It whispers from the shadows of the French Quarter. It is a story of cruelty and suffering, of justice denied and of a darkness that continues to haunt the present. The LaLaurie House stands as a monument to the victims. It serves as a reminder that we must never forget the past. We must continue to fight against injustice in all its forms. The story is a testament to the power of belief. It reminds us that even in the face of unimaginable horror, the human spirit can endure. The LaLaurie House remains a place of pilgrimage for those drawn to the macabre. It is a place where the veil between the living and the dead seems thin. 
and it is a place where the echoes of the past continue to resonate, reminding us that some stories are destined to haunt us forever.